It seems like what we've come up with is perfect for the most part, which is yeah. great news. It, it should get us most of the way there. Um... Hello, everyone, and welcome to another new Ganymede devlog. I am your narrative lead and co-producer, Michael P., and I'm joined once again by our art director and co-producer, Billy. How you doing? Good. Very good. You know, I said I didn't interrupt you there. I was actually giving you space there if you want to say anything else. That's why I said hardly anything. I was <laughs> you're, for it. you're anticipating it, trying to get in as fast <laughs> yeah. as you can. Yeah, no, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, and making her uh, devlog debut, uh, we've got our uh, Unreal dev leads. Timmy, how you doing? Uh, hi, I'm fine. Thanks. How are you guys? Uh, good, good. Very good. Good, good real good. Um, look, I don't want to have too much preamble here. I know a lot of people are uh, seeing this for the first time uh, coming in off the landing page. So welcome, welcome. Uh, just to give you the, the super, super quick brief, uh, New Ganymedes, if you haven't caught up yet, is a sci-fi fantasy retro futurist MMO ARPG sandbox game. Uh, we've been working on it for about 12 months now. We got a nice little indie team of, uh, I think we got like nearly a dozen people now. We started, I think there were like four or five of us working on it 12 months ago. We've been steadily, steadily building up the team. Uh, it's been super scrappy, but we've also been punching like way above our weight and uh, really, really happy with everything we've made so far and excited to show you what, uh, what we've been up to the last couple of months. I think we're just going to skip to some action, if that's all right with both of you. Yes, always. All right. Let's do it. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> we got like people's faces talking to me. That's sick. <laughs> oh no, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's happening. It's happening. It's gone. Hold that thought. Okay, <laughs> alright. Oh, look at them die. <laughs> They're like burnt up and stuff. Went to the went to hell where they belong. Went to awesome. the ether. Um, yeah, we've been focusing over that kind of stuff. Oh shit, we got more incoming. We've been focusing on uh, more of that kind of stuff over, you know, combat and animations and all the kind of stuff that we're seeing in here. So all the animation stuff is placeholder. All the UI stuff is placeholder. This uh, environment is basically a spawn test for these basic um, revenant enemies. Um, it's working out the, the sort of logic and the, um, the telemetry for them, as far as I understand. Um, is that about right, Timmy? Uh huh. Oh goodness. Okay, we gotta we gotta keep moving here. We gotta get to the objective, or we're just gonna get absolutely overwhelmed. Where's Billy? We already lost Billy. Oh no, he's no, with no. us here. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. All right, let's get. Oh, some I hate how you out can't spam this gun bit. anymore. Are you guys um? Are you guys shooting? Yeah. Okay, it looks like the um, the bullets are not uh, replicating at the moment. Mm. I also can't swing my sword anymore. I'll try um, switching weapons or like resetting your character. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's working now, it's working now. I see they're all aggroing on me. <laughs> they're not too worried yeah, about you. This is a great. This is a great tactic. They chase you, we kill them. Yeah, that's fine. I'll tank. AI doesn't doesn't target other players yet. That's that suits me fine. I'll tank and you all can spank. <laughs> oh, this is so cool! Look at this little section right here. Right, here we go. For a little cutscene. Oh, you guys are taking the piss, eh? Honestly. <laughs> How? How do you find the time to me? All right, let's check out. Well, Tim helped. Tim, Tim did a lot of the cutscene stuff, actually. Yeah, so so this is basically testing two things, right? It's testing the um the the spawn logic for the revenants. Now that things are a bit hectic, we've got a moment here. It's testing the spawn logic for the revenants, just those basic revenant enemies, and also the um quest objectives. Um, so this Umbriel environment. It, it's going to be a gameplay loop that's almost like um, almost like a roguelike. Um, we're taking a lot of inspiration from uh, from Hades, 
uh, for the, the kind of um, narrative trajectory where uh, you're basically entering the same environment multiple times, but you know, quest objectives are going to move around and the narrative is going to continue to move forward. Um, so, uh, you know, character dialogue and stuff like that is going to um, basically proceed from one to the next to the next uh, each time that you do the loop. Um, so we've been basically, uh, yeah, testing that sort of stuff and, and ironing it out. So don't, don't pay too much attention to the dialogue you're seeing at the moment because that's all placeholder as well. I don't want anyone to necessarily treat anything as canon. Oh, we got to destroy this, by the way. Um, but it's cool to see that it's uh, that it's working, right? I am blown away at how good this looks. It's it's wild, isn't it? The lumen looks so so nice. So um, it really does. We we showed off a couple of shots of. Um, Umbriel a few weeks ago that was still in um, Unreal 4 and you're noticing particularly the lighting conditions are looking quite different today and that's because um, in the last couple of weeks we um, upgraded to uh, Unreal 5.1 All right Now we need to get back to the keyhole Woo! <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. There's so many a mixture of mechanics going on here. I know, like it's a pretty wild uh, hybrid that we've created here. Oh, oh he there he is! <laughs> he is Daddy. <laughs> Come here, he is. here he is. All right, let's try and let's try and uh, bait him out here a little bit. Okay, because I know he's spawning in the arena, but why should we have to fight him in the arena, right? That's that's uh, that's not. Uh oh. What is that? Like a tidal wave or something coming. Oh heck. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh Golmog, please! Oh man, he hits like an absolute truck, doesn't he? Um, we haven't coded any of this guy's like mechanics or uh, logic or anything yet. We just wanted to kind of get him in here to test this um, this spawn test again. Oh, oh no. Oh no, this is like a, it's like a Fortnite style death wall. Okay, right. Is this is this like a timer for how we have to kill him or Oh, I see what's happening. We have to bring him back into the arena. Alright, okay. We can't just kite him around. We've gotta find him close quarters. Alright, let's go. Um are there iframes on the dodge roll now, Timmy? There are, yeah. Oh good, good, good. Good, good. Okay. I don't think either of you are damaging him either. I don't think so. Yeah, it's not replicating any of the bullets. Try hitting him in uh, melee, see if that does damage. Oh, crap. No, that's not working either. <laughs> Have I got to solo this guy? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, no. I've only got like a sliver of health left. Any potions? <laughs> What's the hotkey for potions? Uh, F. F? Uh. I think. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. I'm just learning this now. <laughs> oh yeah, he's not taking any melee damage whatsoever. And not not from me either. <laughs> oh my god. See ya. That right. See ya, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Oh jeez. You know what? Even even without um, any of his mechanics, he's still kind of terrifying. Um, just the way he is. All right, and that's brought us back in uh, to uh, to New Ganymede. All right, I'm gonna take us back to Umbriel, um, just to the the empty zone, so we can have mm -hmm. a little bit of a chat here about what's going on. Oh, that was so cool. I love the objectives. That was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm really impressed to see them, uh, to see them working. Um, like I said, all of the animation stuff is placeholder. None of um, the mechanics have been coded yet for, um, for Golmog or really for um, Revenant enemies either. So it's all like, you know, bare bones, just testing like spawn conditions and stuff at the moment. Um, same, same with like the quest objectives, you know, all of that UI stuff is placeholder, um, obviously, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? 
All right, I'm just going to bring my field of view out here a little bit because we're going to be checking out the environment. So what we just ran through and uh, what we're looking at here is Umbriel Zone D. It's only a um, relatively small section uh, of the map that we've finished so far. I'd say uh, what we've got in here is probably about a quarter of the map. Um, it's not fully populated with all of the um, props and assets and there's going to be like a lot more solar stuff, uh, a lot of buildings and stuff like this. This was... Uh, originally a sort of solar research station. You can see a little bit of that in there um, at the moment. What do we got coming for Umbriel, Billy? Because I think um, we're gonna have this level basically all done in the next um, six to eight weeks. And what we're seeing here is already pretty epic, but like I say, it's only a very small part of it. Yeah, so we've got um, all of the buildings and uh, all of the zones and districts that are um, going through a bit of a process tweak at the moment. So mm -hmm. it really comes down to um, the texturing process. So everything in this entire uh, dungeon has been modeled and is ready to, to sort of go. We're just finalizing trim sheet stuff at the moment and uh, working through like a really good strategy for performance. Um, so when you do come into the dungeon, it's uh, optimized and and looks good all at the same time so mm -hmm. that's sort of what we've been working through for the last uh, three weeks yeah we're really starting to pick up momentum now as well whatever we were doing prior was like a, a much more custom approach which is great because we you know worked out the art style we worked out every little nitty gritty, gritty detail that we wanted to implement now that we know what it is and what it's going to look like we yeah, build a much more efficient process and a more efficient workflow the main thing to take note of uh, on this is early stages, right? We've we've been working on this for not a very large amount of time. Uh, when it comes to the concept and the design, we spent um, three months to design this entire area with an absolute skeleton crew. We're talking three people mm -hmm. uh, and the same amount of people that are doing the modeling process. That has increased, but it's still very small. So this is like the, the a very small showcase of what's to come. This is one zone, one section out of six sections. So yeah, just the just the icing on the cake. While the 3D team is working through the rest of Umbriel, Billy, we've got um, all the uh, the concept designers uh, doing some passes back in New Ganymede here. Uh, I think we've stated before, but basically everything that you see in the main city hub, particularly all the buildings and most of the props at the moment, is stuff that we cracked out in the first um, 10 weeks of development so that we could get out that little gameplay teaser. When you begin to develop any product, any IP, for us this is a custom style, a custom world. It's all started from scratch. Um, so we we have to start with the designs is in a blue sky phase so that means we have to just like talk a lot amongst the creatives in the team and try to figure out hey what's going to be cool what's going to look cool and what ends up happening from there is we we come up with these things called initial concepts and initial designs so what we see in the city right now this is the initial concepts and the initial designs just to showcase and, and have a proof of concept of what this world will be eventually so the feeling and the mood will be maintained but the actual density and the quality of the work will increase so now in in the process we are in a stage where we're doing finalization and design full pass and that means we take the pre-existing designs and we take them into a place where they are of a quality level that we have based on our timeline so to speak on the ether core for instance that started off as like a, a gray blob, um, a vertical blob, as you can see. Uh, the concept itself, the mood of the, that, it, that it had was, was really nice, uh, but the design work was very loose and, you know, um, sort of six hour design process and then a six hour build process. So what you're seeing right in front of you in game is, is that, but what we have now uh, and the stuff that I've been working through um, that is a, a one month, two month design process uh, and a one month build process. So the quality is going to be exponentially uh, better. 
I think that same um, theory is going to be applied across the board uh, with new Ganymede in general. So that is the current stage. That is currently what we're working through and we're making very, very good progress. We've also, as part of the current phase, we've been punching in a lot more of the uh, narrative details into each of these places as well. Uh, we've got a much better idea of the residents of New Ganymede, all the characters, all the factions, uh, their wants and needs and objectives and conflicts and, and all that kind of stuff. And the stuff that I'm showing you right now, you should be able to see a lot of that uh, diegetic narrative injection as well, which um, is obviously something that uh, I'm extremely excited about. So. We've got the ether core, we've got the top, we've got the bottom and the inside here. We've got the firewall HQ that's uh, perched uh, in the inside of the ether core as well. With um, Commander Caius Dumain and Abel Second down here. Uh, we've got the bottom main that Tyson has been working on, which looks um, absolutely incredible. This is the thing that I've been like most excited to actually get inside of uh, and explore. It has so much narrative going on. It's such a complicated um, narrative as well. It's broken com like compartmentally into different areas uh, with the narrative. So a lot of really interesting bleed challenges with the design. Yeah, it's just an epic building and, and I have the same feeling. I can't wait to like run through it and really feel it for myself, so. We've also got uh, the forge that James is working on. A pretty um, substantial design pass there, as you can see. Uh, we've also got the museum and we've got the player housing districts, uh, which we've actually got a little, um, little walk through here of uh, what that level design, what that layout is gonna be looking like in Blender. Uh, we've got about, I think 400 uh, housing units in here at the moment. Is that, is that right? Is that the number that we're shooting for, for the demo, 400? Yeah, three, 350 to 400. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, a challenge in itself with the amount of like textures <laughs> and that sort of thing. So we're, you know, working through those challenges, but that, that whole area, um, if you've shown that, Michael is, yeah, just, it's amazing. It's going to be so much fun to traverse and there's gonna be a lot of little hangout zones and gamification added throughout it as well. And the sight lines are just, just gonna speak for themselves really, just how vast and cool that looks. Yeah, every single one of these houses is going to be player owned and they're gonna have uh, external customization, uh, different sort of skins and decals and stuff like that that you'll be able to earn in game, uh, as well as uh, instanced interiors, uh, which are gonna be a lot larger on the inside than they are on the outside, you'll be able to collect um, a lot of trophies and furniture and uh, basically the the kind of SDK progression that we've been showing off in the past, there's going to be um, a kind of micro version of that inside each of these houses for people to uh, make them look like however they want and uh, you know invite their friends over and show off uh, some of their rare trophies. You would have noticed uh, in Umbriel at the moment, we've only got one enemy type uh, in the build and we've only got one variant of that enemy type, uh, which is this uh, little revenant right here. Uh, we're going to have three or four uh, variations of the basic revenant enemy just to sort of break that up, make sure they're not you know, homogenous. They're all you know, looking a little bit different. So I'm gonna show, um, there we go. There's one other variant that we've got um, modeled and rigged right there. This guy's a little bit uh, further along in his his mutation, his uh, degeneration. Um, but ultimately, we've got quite a few different uh, variants here, which, as I said, are sort of representing um, different stages of uh, the, the degeneration of the revenants um, exposed to the, the environment of Umbriel. Uh, there's some narrative stuff going on there. Um, Ultimately, inside Umbriel, we're going to have three different sort of basic core enemy types. This is a super, super old concept uh, that I'm showing here. It'll give you at least a vague idea um, of the scope. This guy that you're seeing in the middle, this was like the, the first kind of sketch that, um, that you did, Billy, of what ended up becoming these guys just to show you like the, the difference between what we've got there and what we're gonna have for each of these enemy types. 
Um, you can also see like the large one here. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of Golmog in that design. That's probably going to change quite a bit. Uh, but the basic philosophy here is that we've got our basic sort of medium sized enemy. We've got a big heavy tanky guy that's going to have a lot of health and is going to hit really hard and be a big threat. And then we're going to have a smaller sort of uh, flying ranged enemy, which is going to basically force you to like change your tactics. You're not just going to be able to um, be zerging down the revenants. You're actually going to have to adjust your positioning. Look out for these guys sort of sniping at you, switching between your your ranged option and your, your melee option to, to deal with it. So um, once we've got all of these enemies in and all the, the mechanics for them, uh, the combat inside New Ganymede is going to be a lot more involved, a lot more um, dynamic and strategic than, uh, than what you're seeing at the moment. I can't believe you're showing this, Michael. That's my first <laughs> thought. Uh, we've already shown this, believe it or not. I know this is to really, to really old and myself, really scrappy. This is a, yeah, this is a very scrappy, very scrappy concept. Um, but the the idea show, it shows through, right? So the, the shapes at the top, that's sort of what we're looking at in terms of um, keeping it dynamic, um, even in the proportions, uh, dynamic in the gameplay and, and mechanics. So, so that side of things is, is really strong. Yeah, the big heavy dude, like that's gonna be super fun. I think what we do need to do is really figure out that language from here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, again, like a really early stage sort of thing. The next stage of those uh, designs is gonna be much, much more um, refined. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. I think it'll be quite a bit improved once uh, we have newer animations um, and everything should run a bit smoother as well. I'll, I'll reiterate what I was saying earlier when we were first getting into Umbriel because that got a little bit um, <laughs> can follow with everything that was going on there. Um, so most of our animations so far have been placeholder, including combat animations. Um, that said, we do have a pretty robust and intuitive combat system designed uh, pretty much completely. And now that we have a new animator in the team, we're actually starting to crack into it. So by the next devlog, we can expect to see probably some pretty dramatic progress in the combat animations for uh, both the enemies and uh, the players as well. So we're really, really excited to be getting into that. Golmog, we've already encountered here. Uh, this guy, he is also a revenant. You can kind of see um, the relationship there when we're looking at these sort of initial sketches as well. Uh, but he is the, the very, very first boss uh, that we've designed. Um, his uh, mechanics as well, I think we've spoken to before, um, but they're going to be quite involved. His little chain hook thing here, he's going to be able to do a bit of um, Roadhog from Overwatch, the sort of get over here thing. He's going to be doing a little bit of that. He's going to be interacting with a lot of mechanics um, from the portal there itself. Uh, he's going to be doing a lot of, you know, gap closer charges and uh, you know, targeting people that are at range and really forcing you to kind of approach him quite um, strategically and like really, really um, keep the players uh, on their toes. We've got a little um, concept animation of uh, that um, arena there where you're fighting him. So this is actually uh, a, a keyhole portal, kind of like the one that you're seeing above the ether core, just a different design, a, a solid design here. He's gonna be interacting with that in some interesting ways. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of a teaser of uh, perhaps one of the phase mechanics there being implied. Um, and we've actually got a, uh, yeah, here we go. We've got an animation tester uh, for what the portal activation is gonna look like. So this is a portal that's been busted up and these revenants have tried to sort of uh, jerry rig, you know, repair scrap together here but is extremely unstable and extremely violent. And uh, it's, gonna mess you, it's gonna mess you up pretty bad. We're exploring the difference between having a, a digital right, which is a little bit closer to kind of what we're using at the moment versus um, something that is also like canonically sound, but perhaps a little bit too gory for the PG that we're trying to stick with here of uh, this molecular print. Yeah, that's it for enemy designs. Oh, okay, yeah, I had some more character stuff here. Obviously, we've got all of the meta crew outfits, all of that kind of character stuff in here at the moment. And what we're moving over to now is a lot of the stuff that, that most players are, are basically gonna be able to 
get their hands on. We are exploring in this first one, what is this Billy? This is the basic uh, player outfit, right? This is what everyone, when they first start the game and they haven't unlocked anything, they haven't um, gotten any loot, this is basically what they're gonna be wearing, what they're gonna be looking like, yeah? Yeah, so we've got uh, like teen color choices, which I, I think we should actually add that in for the creation of new players. Yeah. And access for everyone basically to be able to choose a color. Yeah, and um, you know, like the basic kind of player character choices that you'd be expecting to have in, you know, skin tone and hairstyle, and that kind of stuff that everyone have access to from the get-go. Um, but I really like this for a, a basic player design. I didn't want um, people to be looking like they're coming in and just like running around in their skivvies. Um, obviously we want to have that sense of progression uh, represented visually as well, but we want players to be, you know, looking and feeling like they're part of the world and like they're competent, like they haven't, um, again, just like working up in the wilderness in their underpants. <laughs> We've got some more here and I'm, we can't really speak to how these are going to be unlocked right now, uh, but uh, we've got some, some more outfit designs. This is a kind of, uh, you know, mechanic engineer. A lot of the, the residents of New Ganymede that have stuck around are going to be sort of filling these kinds of roles. So we've got the um, feminine and masculine versions for each of those as well. Uh, and um, one more here. Oh, I love this so much. This is so cool. <laughs> this is uh, a Vanguard design language. Um, this is a kind of uh, Vanguard sort of warrior, freelancer, Ronin kind of vibe uh, that we're exploring here, which is uh, going to be quite a rare outfit. Um, and I think that's, um, that's looking really nice so far. I think the main thing is to shout out the artist, uh, Gonzo. He's yeah. a, a new team, a new team player here. Yeah, this is uh, awesome. This is he's killed it. He's done such a good job on these designs, and so yeah, big shout out to him. And a lot more to come. Oh yeah, a lot more to come. Yeah, actually, speaking of stuff that Gonzo has been doing, so obviously Umbriel is now in the environment, and the revenants are, are not the only enemies that we're encountering. Uh, you guys have already seen these basic units from Solar's uh, Val the Virtual Autonomous Organization. The main two factions that we're accounting from Solar are the View and the Val, which are all very basic AI sort of hive mind powered bots. Uh, we got that basic enemy there. And now <laughs> we got the, uh, the big one, the big chunky one. In the demo, you're probably going to be encountering at least one of these guys. And uh, it's going to be pretty serious business. The logic here is having a small, medium and large enemy type to start with for these factions. And that's what you're seeing here is the large. Most of you know, we launched the first landing page last Friday with a sign up flow to claim what we're describing as founders rewards, essentially a free pre-order bonus. Uh, there've been some pretty significant hiccups with that process, mostly stemming from a, uh, a large amount of traffic that has crashed up against the new Twitter API rate limiter, courtesy of our friend Elon. Uh, it seems that when you're picking up a few hundred follows a minute, that API starts to treat them like bots, <laughs> understandably, uh, and knocks them back. There was also a bit of confusion about the whole auto-generated non-custodial IMX wallet thing. Uh, this is understandable given that it's a completely novel approach to handle all of this uh, in the back end and not prompt signups to make those links themselves, uh, which most Web3 games have been doing. They, they require you to go and create um, Ethan wallet and then go and create an IMX wallet and then link the two together. And by the time you've done that for people uh, that are coming in, you know, as gamers, the drop off rate is, is exponential. Like no one, no one wants to have to deal with any of that. And um, frankly, they shouldn't have to. Uh, so we're setting a precedent for any of those blockchain processes being seamless and invisible for ease of access to the average gamer navigating all that stuff. They honestly don't give a crap about it and they shouldn't have to. All that matters is that they can use items back and forth between other games and other apps and trade them at their discretion. So the aspiration for us is a Web2 user experience powered by Web3 infrastructure. We're not quite there yet, but we're figuring out 
and we really appreciate everyone's patience and understanding while we navigate these uncharted waters. Um, most of the bugs have been ironed out, so if you still want uh, a chance to get these Founders Rewards, uh, that landing page is going to be up for another several weeks, so there's no rush, but you can head to uh, newganymede.com uh, and uh, basically get through that uh, registration process to uh, to claim these right now. So we've got a rifle here. This is the Mark I View Carbine. Uh, it is in lore a very experimental and expensive uh, carbine rifle, which is only uh, made available to View agents. Commander Caius Dumain of the New Ganymede Firewall has managed to get his hands uh, on a couple for his own use. Uh, and this um, this design, this iteration is basically based off of his version. Uh, and then we've got the NGS PV Kestrel. It's a glider. It's not a helicopter. <laughs> it's hard to understand the scale when we're showing this image here. It's going to really, really stand out. And um, I think it's going to look really, really cool in game. So we're going to be able to show these off for you uh, in game in the near future. But if you want to be able to use these as soon as you start playing the closed alpha, then um, yeah, go sign up at newganymede.com right now. Well, guys, that's the epilog. And thanks for watching as always. We'll always keep you guys in the loop with what's going on. I look forward to showcasing all of the difficulties that we've been going through and all of the solutions in the near future thank you thanks for watching i'll keep pushing keyboard button to make it work and get new features out soon hope you'll uh, keep checking in on the progress thanks let's do it oh. let's do it today it's not that's not going Michael. in. That's not going in. That is not going in. <laughs>